Hello friends, today I'm working on a doll inspired by Swan Lake. If you like this video or the doll, give me a like and if you want to see more then please subscribe. Thanks in advance. I started making this doll a really long time ago and there are bits that I've forgotten but I'm going to try and work through my choices and explain to you the best I can. This doll was created for a twisted fairy tale swap so she's not going to be a normal human looking adept and I'll explain kind of the choices that I made and the backstory for her a little later in the video. I decided to use Spectra because I knew that I wanted her to be a white base and I really liked her hollow cheekbones. But Spectra's body has the clear limbs and I think they're quite special. I knew I was going to be giving her an opaque paint job so I didn't want to waste that detail. So I'm swapping out the body and using a Frankie. I chose Frankie just because I have about a billion of her. I chose the colour story after looking through Google for like beautiful fish and I found Siamese fighting fish and there was one that had like orange and blue and white all together and I thought it just looked absolutely stunning. I prepped her as usual using acetone to take off her face. I wanted to use the colours in the colour story for her hair um, and so I chose these colours from Retro Dolls. I decided to give her like quite a sparse reroute because I'm going to be doing like a gem undercut later. Even though I wasn't completely plugging her scalp, I decided to give her that grey blue um, paint covering all over because there will be spots of her scalp visible. This doll had her first face up in April 2020 and I asked on Instagram whether anybody would be interested in seeing the process of the first face up and their response was an overwhelming yes so here it is and very very luckily I could get the footage back. I've really been struggling with footage, losing it, it corrupting, not being able to transfer it and it's so frustrating so at least I was pretty happy to get it back. This was kind of the time that I got a really good sharpener and could get really beautiful lines. So on the second face up, when I was doing that, my sharpener wasn't working. I'll talk a bit about it later. Um, but that was incredibly frustrating. So this is probably a good example of how I was working at the time. Her eyes were still quite a lot bigger. And I think I find that doll artists often say, you've got to draw the waterline, you've got to draw the waterline, which is fine. I mean, it's a stylistic choice. You don't have to draw it. But because it's said so much, I think I've been putting um, too much eff emphasis on waterlines. Um, and what's helped me recently is to have a look at photos of human eyes um, from the front and decide how much I want to be showing. So I think one of the problems with this face up was that way too much of the waterline was in focus on her eyes. I really wanted her to have like um, a sad, dreamy, hopeless expression. And I, th I think it looks really cute and I think it did pretty well. And I honestly can't remember why I took the face up of potentially just those waterlines. But because there's nearly a year between these two face ups and I've done so much more learning and I did even more learning in the end face up that I went with actually, um, it's, it's quite interesting to see them. I tried to keep within the same colour story so with the yellows and oranges and um, blues I'm not using like greens or purples at all. I find it quite difficult with this face up because she's so blank white it was hard to keep her white but it was also difficult because you can't add highlights on white so normally I'll do um, the shade and the highlight um, to, to kind of sculpt the face but I, I lost the highlight on this so it was all in shade that was quite tricky I thought So when I was thinking of her backstory, I was trying to think about how the story would become twisted and how she would be twisted. And I thought like kind of a, a branch in reality. Like I'm a fan of the many worlds theory and like different highlight timelines and stuff. And I thought that would be an interesting way to explore the story. So kind of the beginning of the Swan Lake story was the same, but then there was like one thing that didn't happen that branched off her storyline. So <laughs> I didn't do great research. I read a couple of Wikipedia articles. I remember watching The Swan Princess a very long time ago and Barbie in Swan Lake. 
and I downloaded Barbie and Swan Lake to watch again but um, got the Hindi audio so couldn't watch it so this is kind of like my best memory of the Swan Lake story although actually I do remember the end of Swan Lake um, the ballet being very very dark they both drown I think um, which is probably darker than I went I think but anyway here's my my story I'm not a writer <laughs> but I thought I'd I thought I'd give it a go I'm gonna try and use my best audiobook voice and uh, try try and make it sound good at least um, but also in the comments let me know if like any tweaks you'd make to the story or like because when I had the story for the mummy um, you, you guys came up with some incredible like tweaks to the story and like added bits of information and I just thought it was so interesting so if you think of anything or like can improve on the story in any way do not hesitate please whack that down in the comments I'd be super grateful The young Princess Adette was cursed by an evil sorcerer because reasons. She was cursed to spend her days as a swan, swimming on the lake in the palace grounds. Only at night was she able to return to her human form. The evil magician von Rothbart, not being completely evil, made sure that there was a way for the curse to be broken. Only a vow of true love could break the spell. Prince Siegfried had to return to the palace, his childhood home, after the death of his father. As the castle bustled preparing for balls and feasts to mark his ascension, he found his mind drifting to the lake on the palace grounds. After the chaos of the day, he wandered to the shore of the lake, where he saw a beautiful swan swimming across the glistening water. Finding comfort in the grace of the swan, he watched her. She glowed. He blinked, clearing tears from his eyes. He stared, transfixed as the swan transformed into a beautiful young woman. Instantly, Prince Siegfried fell in love with Odette because she was beautiful and this is a fairy tale. He promised her his love. Odette was skeptical and she fears the evil magician. The following night, Siegfried was at a ball where he was supposed to choose his future consort. The evil magician von Rothbart was there with his daughter, Odile, who looked strangely like Odette. Siegfried fell deeply under the spell of Odile's beauty, breaking his vow of fidelity to Odette. Odette watched from the shadows as Siegfried danced with Odile, her heart breaking hating herself for trusting the prince. She fled back to the lake and sat upon the shore where she had met Siegfried. In her human form, she cried, her tears falling to the ground, wishing for the power to stop feeling. A dripping, dark shape emerged from the lake and approached Adet. Give me your heart. It can't hurt you if you don't have it. Odette looked up into the empty hood of a dripping cloak, a dank, rotting smell coming from the depths of the wet cloth. She looked blankly into the darkness, consumed by her grief. I... she stammered. Give it to me. You will no longer be troubled by love. I never want to feel this pain again. Never. The cloak moves, as if looking toward the palace, then back to Odette. Never. There comes a rumbling from inside the cloak, as if an ocean was laughing. Odette nods and holds her hand out to the cloak. A dead, rotting hand comes from the depths of the cloak and touches the soft, white skin of her hand. Consider it done. She feels a tearing pain. Then, all she feels is cold. Cold and emptiness. Odette's curse was broken. Without a heart, she could never feel love. No one could pledge love to her. But she'd forgotten how to become human through her pain. She forgot how to look human. She became a creature of the lake, losing even the beauty she had as a swan. 
she no longer transformed each night, but rather found herself stuck in a transformation between swan, human, and something else. Her body was changing into that of a monster. Ashamed by the changes her body was going through, she found beautiful stones and pushed them into her flesh. The crystals sparkle against her cold, pale white skin. She knew that beauty was the only thing that would bring people to her, and she craved their company. No one came to the lake, scared of the shadowy pale figure in its depths. She watched from the lake as Siegfried married a dial, the evil magician smiling and warm with his royal relatives surrounding him. She watched their children grow and marry and have their own children. She watched their joy forever, none of them coming near her lake, never feeling the pain of love again. And no one lived ever happily ever ever again. Um, I realised halfway through editing that that um, I'd done half of it in the past tense and half of it in the present tense. Whoopsies! I do that quite a lot when I write stories. It's one of the reasons I just don't bother writing stories anymore. Anywho, on to the next face up. There was quite a lot of staining after taking off the old face up. I did three layers of Mr. Super Clear underneath um, the first face up. I just think it's one of those things that's going to happen with pale dolls. I don't mind staining on my dolls. If it's that bad and I'm that worried about it, I'll just give them an airbrush coat. Like, it's not a big deal. Lots of people go on about not using certain products because it'll stain your dolls. There's so many dolls that you buy already stained. I just got a load of bait, My Little Ponies, some Generation 1s and they're covered in, in um, highlighter, I assume. Everything always looks fluorescent pink, but I don't know if that's just because like little kids always use fluorescent pink or it just goes that way. Anyway, I don't think um, staining is a big deal. There are things that won't stain that people say will stain and blah, 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 blah. You just have to experiment with dolls, read labels and don't just trust what people tell you because there's this huge thing within this community of people just spouting absolute rubbish and literally telling people not to do their own research or their own own tests. You know what I mean? Like I've got some um, some just water colour markers to do a face up with because they're one of the banned materials that you can never do a face up with and I saw um, Sugar Charm Shop doing a face up with water um, watercolour markers obviously it looks incredible incredible because she's so very very talented but yeah I just wanted, I wanted to have a go the, like I was talking recently about materials as well and um, we're talking about Arteza I was using Arteza in this video hashtag not sponsored bought it with my own money um, and just products that were a good price and ones that I wanted to try. I got the gouache because I, I wanted to try some gouache and uh, spoiler alert I loved it and then I got uh, the watercolour um, metallic and I only got one I got Aztec gold and now I really want the whole palette because I, I just loved it but yeah other people have said that they've struggled with um, Arteza pencils and then some people say they actually love them. Um, I think always have a look at that artist work and if you possibly can try the material um, something that I was recommended but I don't like is the Derwent ink tents they just don't work for me and I'm not saying they're a bad medium because I love them on paper or fabric just for dolls it's, it's just not it for me and Mungio pastels as well to be fair on the first face up I used Mungio on the second one I used Faber Castell and I really struggled to get um pigment to lay down on on this second face up i i think i decided that i wanted her to look a bit sick so she's got a lot um a lot more blushing but it, it wouldn't go quite as dark as i wanted it to and actually i only did three um layers i'd normally do a lot more than that um but i took a lot of time with the layers because i could build up um quite a lot of layers with the gouache um problematically i couldn't um get my pencil sharp so that's one of the reasons i went with a tiny tiny brush and some gouache on this one i decided to give her like um partial het well, het heterochromia like i i wanted to give her a smidge of a, a an orange eye as if like that's part of her transformation as well I 
I found that when I was spraying the sealant as well, like um, tiny little, tiny little hairs and dust would get stuck into it, which was really flipping annoying because she's a white doll and I wanted to try and keep her white. Some of it I, I made into veins, but um, some of it I um, used a scalpel to kind of lift it off of her face. Part of my constant battle of getting this in focus there's pencils on the desk for sure that's not helping but also my tripod kind of like sags a little bit so i just need to remember to um recenter and press the autofocus i actually really struggled with the camera placement as well doing this one and i think it might have been way too close but it was completely in my way while i was um working I'll put some macro shots in the end of her lips and her eyes. This is something that I always wanted to try and do. Um, there's some artists, I think quite a few of the artists in I follow, I'll have to link them down below. They do um, these tiny little lines on the lips and not like the stark one colour stripes. Um, they, they're just tiny little lines that look um, like the cracks in your lips when they're dry and I think it really adds to the realism. I found that with gouache and with these tiny tiny paint brushes, I will link them below because finally finding some tiny tiny paint brushes, the gouache meant that I could get really good pigment and high opacity and good colour payoff and then the, the brush let me do the tiny little lines. This was the first time that I've used paint to this extent on a face up and I do think it looks beautiful. I've heard that gouache can crack, I've put her head on and off a couple of dolls, I needed a doll um, while I was styling her, her body's um, too extra to be like faffing around and doing her hair while it's on there and I haven't had a problem so again experiment, don't believe what everybody else is telling you if you can try. So my pencil sharpener, obviously I always use pencils, that's my, my favourite thing to use in a face up. Uh, my Prismacolor pencil sharpener was like chewing up the wood of the pencils, so I was like you must be able to sharpen a pencil and then it said, uh, sharpen a pencil sharpener. Google said yes but it might change the alignment and I was like yeah of course it will because it's like literally cutting part of the blade off so I then looked for replacement sharpener blades got some from Amazon I think and um, put them into the sharpener and it would get like literally three twists off being that perfect sharp 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 that you could see in the first face off and then just snap and I thought, oh no, that must be the lead of this one pencil. Tried another couple of pencils, no, nope, same thing. So no go on that one. I was trying to sharpen with a knife and I cannot get it to that as sharp of a sharp point with a knife as I could with that sharpener. I, I genuinely have no idea how other people do it. I just cannot do it. I think using sandpaper is not a bad idea actually for sharpening as well. So I might try that in the future. So I got to a point actually with this face up and looking back through the footage, I kind of wish I'd stopped early. Like I love how it looks, but there was one point where she had really bright glowing eyes and she had way, way softer of a look and it is really quite beautiful. But then I, I pushed it and went th further. I think it's quite hard to know when to stop with art at all and especially with a face up and I didn't this time I think I think I went a little bit far I still think she's beautiful I'm still really really proud of her and I did so much learning on this doll that it's completely worth it but yeah I think I'll be a bit more conscious of not overdoing it in the future and trying to like um, rein it in a little bit Oh, I forgot to mention as well, I decided to do her eyebrows orange. Um, I, th I actually think I was convinced that I did them orange the first time and then looking back, of course I didn't. But um, yeah, I, I like them orange. And on the first face up, I forgot that I'd given her little teeth and I really like those, but I think, and I think they make her look a little bit more hopeless, which I think kind of adds to the, the story that I had in my mind in the first place. I think like that she did have more emotions but then I think on on the second run through I think in my head she she'd kind of given up on 
emotions other than like disgust and hate and jealousy and stuff like that. So this is the Arteza Aztec Gold watercolour. I love it. I think it's absolutely beautiful. I got it because on the pictures it looks a lot pinkier, but it is kind of an antique gold and it's absolutely gorgeous. It came with two half pans, which is really quite a lot of paint. It's more than I'm going to get through, um, but I do have a destination for the for the next for the other half pan. But yeah, I really want the full set of watercolours, but they're this this really annoys me they're 35 dollars if you buy them in america the 35 pounds if you buy them in the uk and like if anybody knows anything about the exchange rates that's not a good deal like we're paying a third extra and i guess our vat is pretty high it's 20 percent. but that's not a third is it like i don't know that makes me sad something else i got for this face up as well was um Perlex Macro Pearl. So um, I didn't know Perlex are just mica powders. However, I do think this one is a little bit special. I got that one and the rose gold one. I'll try the rose gold one in a future face up. But the Macro Pearl is uh, like a, a bigger flake. I genuinely, I don't really know the difference between a regular mica powder and Perlex. I guess I hope that Perlex are. Um, more ethically sourced because I know there can be issues with mica but not really sure I, d I did really like the macro pearl and I got the little jar because it's way cheaper like the big one was something like 10 pounds which is a, a bit of a an amount to smash down on on a mica powder but yeah the the little one was I think six quid and it'll last forever with the amount that I'm using I think that's kind of the benefit with doing dolls a note on her catch lights i think i'm gonna try and rein it in further than this on my decora doll somebody put in the comments um that my catch lights were too much and she was absolutely right they were um on this one i found that the gouache i was using just white gouache straight out of the tube but it wasn't going on opaque which then gave it this kind of like um like a, a sheer blue sheen which is kind of exactly what you see in um, catch lights and humans which I really liked. I'm gonna pop some macro photos in here as well. I really like sharing close-ups. It, it looks very very strange but yeah I, I think it's <laughs> kind of interesting and helps you be able to see techniques that other artists are using. So this is where I'm gonna end it today. Um, I'm trying very hard to keep my videos under 30 minutes and because there was so much in the face up that I wanted to cover I thought it best to split the face up and everything else there's quite a lot in the other video and there's some footage that I've lost that I still want to explain because there's a new technique that I used that I think might be useful for other people as well I, I'm, I am trying to not lose footage I have the two external hard drives and I have an SD um, a, a USB drive that I'm using as well but some I got a new SD card reader that was corrupting footage on the transfer which made me really flipping angry um, and then some footage will open and play but it won't transfer and it's been a big old pain I am trying I promise so tell me what you think uh, subscribe if you want to see the rest of the video uh, she's gonna be a really cool doll I think I'm, I'm really proud of her and yeah um thanks for watching to the end like comment subscribe do the youtube goodies my patreon's downstairs if you're interested and yeah much love see you in the next one bye